Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. We're going to talk about dipole antennas today and a common frustration among people who try to put up dipoles and try to get them to cover all the bands. You'll note that when I talk to you about antennas for the reference station and so on, I always omit 80 meters. That's because there is no single antenna that easily covers uh, 80 meters. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. And uh, let's just take a look at some charts because I think you'll find them very interesting. These charts aren't just word charts, but I've got some uh, printouts from my Easy NEC uh, antenna modeling program and some interesting data from West Mountain Radio that we can look at to see why some bands are easy to cover with a dipole and why other bands you just can't do it. Okay, so let's take a look. So here's the question I get. Why won't my 80 meter dipole cover the entire band? It just won't. You can get the high portion, the middle portion, the low portion, whatever. And it's even worse on vertical antennas. Uh, like for example, my HF9V butternut only covered about 25 kilohertz of the 350 kilohertz, or 300, no, 500 kilohertz wide. Uh, 80 meter band. Let's take a look. Here is the answer. It's the width of the band versus the center frequency. Now for a 160 meter, if you pick the center of the band, 1900 kilohertz, 200 kilohertz is 10% of that. It's 10% plus or minus 5% on each side, okay? It's worse on 80 meters. The 80 meter band is 500 kilohertz wide and the center of the band 3750 kilohertz. The band covers 13% of that uh, center frequency. 13%, that's the highest on the HF bands. 40 meters, it's a lot more manageable. It's 300 kilohertz, but out of 7125 kilohertz it's only 4.2 percent of the band 30 meters it's ridiculous it's only 100 kilohertz out of 10.15 uh, megahertz it's only one percent of the band at 20 meters which is real easy to cover uh, with a dipole it's 350 kilohertz out of 14175 kilohertz which is 2.5% of the band. And we know we can cover that easily. Are you kind of getting the feel now that uh, the band, a, a 40 meter dipole will just cover the whole band. And that band is only 4.2% of the center frequency. Whereas on 80 meters is 13% and it's just not gonna cover it. Now, if we go up to 10 meters, that's 6%, and you're going to be hard-pressed to get a dipole to cover all of that. But in this case, the bottom half of the band, which is where all the action is, is used for quite different things from the top half of the band. The top half of the band is used for FM, and the lower part of the band is used for single sideband rag chewing, things like that. Um, six meters is a problem because it's a full four megahertz out of 52 megahertz at 7.7 percent. You're not quite going to get a dipole to cover all of that. Fortunately, most of the activity on six meters is low in the band, so uh, you can build a dipole to look at that. Now why? Let's look at why. Let's look first at uh, a diagram for 20 meters this is from EZNEC Plus, okay? And it is the SWR curve for a dipole centered in uh, the band, which is about uh, 14,175, okay? Now, this is 75 meter, or I'm sorry, 75 ohm coax, because it gives much better results. The program assumes that the dipole is a full half wave high. 
Okay, so that's going to give it a center uh, impedance of about 75 ohms. Uh, the difference is so small that you can tune it with uh, any radio that has a built-in tuner. have no problem tuning one-to-one -one across the band on 20 meters. But on 20 meters, we noted here, 20 meters, it's only 2.5% of the center frequency, and it covers it easily. Let's go to 40 meters. 40 meters has a little bit more of a problem. See, it's not quite less than 1.5 to 1 across the entire band, but it is less than 2 to 1 across the entire band. Again, your standard run-of-the-mill radio, like an ICOM 7300 or an FT991A or something like that, will cover this no problem. 1 to 1 across the band. So a single dipole can cover all of 40 meters from FT8 all the way up to the contesting and rag chewing up at the other end okay now let's look what happens at at uh, 80 meters remember in 80 meters we said that it's 13.3 percent and here's 80 meters a dipole this is a wire dipole uh, with 12 gauge wire uh, again at a full half wavelength in the air now it is true that if the wire is thicker, the bandwidth will be broader. But you've got to get a wire that's like a meter or two thick to get more bandwidth on here. For practical reasons, again, 12 gauge wire, like you might pick up at uh, Home Depot, you get two to one bandwidth over this much of the band, about half of it, and 1.5 to one band over just a portion of the band okay so you can move this dip anywhere in here that you want by lengthening and shortening the dipole but a single dipole a standard wire dipole is just quite simply not going to cover the 80 meter band we look at it here's the problem right here it's 13.3 percent of the center frequency up and down Let's look at this West Mountain Radio data. West Mountain Radio is a company that makes all kinds of accessories for ham radio. I have a couple of their power strips, uh, and they have taken over uh, the company that made my um, uh, voltage booster. has been taken over, and they make them there now, and they're excellent. Um, anyway, they've got this dipole antenna here, so the length L in this chart is the entire length of the dipole. This is 468 over F. E is half of that. So we'll just look at the L column here. And we noted 80 meters, 3.5 megahertz is 133.7 feet long. And at 4 megahertz, it's 117 feet. Look at the difference between the two. It's like Let's see, we'd go 27, 33, about 15 feet difference in the length of the antenna. Whereas if we go over here to 20 meters and look at the difference in length between uh, the shortest and the longest, we see 32.7 to 33.43. It's not even a foot. It's about, let's see, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4, 0 0.7 feet, about 8 inches difference. Whereas in here we're talking 15 feet difference between one end of the band and the other. So this is why you can't get a single dipole to cover all of 80 meters, or 160 for that matter. Uh, 60 is a problem. I didn't run the simulation on 60, but I can. Uh, 40 meters, 30 meters, it's just laughably different. Look at this. It's 0.2. 0.23, a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch difference between the, the beginning and the top end of the band over here. Okay, so what's the bottom line? Why won't my 80 meter dipole cover the entire band? It's because the band is too big a percentage of the center frequency, and the dipole just can't stretch on either side of it to cover that. Um... At 20 meters, a single dipole will cover the whole band beautifully. 
On 40 meters, a single dipole will cover the whole band beautifully, well within the tuning range of a modern radio. And here, look at this. Way up high, well over 3, close to 4 SWR. Yeah, you may be able to force it with a wide range tuner. Uh, but you're going to have some losses in there because it's pretty far off. And I do recommend West Mountain Radio, by the way. But uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, power strip that is part of the reference station is, uh, I think, a West Mountain Radio one. Okay, so and very, very interesting data that they have on their webpage there. All right. Interesting. So we've learned a little bit about antennas and why wire dipoles are great for 40 meters and up, but just don't really work on the entire 80 meter band. Now, I have seen uh, articles where people will like essentially make a fan dipole for 80 meters by putting 80 meters of uh, 3.5 megahertz up and then put in a fan arrangement one for four megahertz and then cover a lot more of the band that way. You can do something like that, but a simple dipole is not going to cover all of 80 meters. I hope this has addressed it in a way that you can understand why a dipole can only cover a certain percentage of the frequency it's cut for on either side of it. Obviously it's exactly tuned for just one frequency and that is the frequency that is uh, the one that we cut it for, but it will resonate along with your antenna tuner on either side of that very well. But not if you go too far. And on 80 meters, it's too far. It's a jump too far. Okay, there you go. Thank you very much for the tremendous response to yesterday's video about my little airplane misadventure. Um, I got a lot of comments on that. I think a lot of hams are also pilots. Um, it was wonderful, and please uh, add your comments to that. Please add your comments to this video and every video. Um, I can't read them all. There just isn't enough time in the day, unfortunately. I have an assistant who is helping me read the comments and surface the ones that really need uh, an answer. And I am using uh, the emails that come to hamradioanswers.org. Hamradioanswers at gmail.com. I'm using those as kind of uh, suggestions for videos, trying to do that. This is one I've had in mind for a while on the charts right here, and I hope it's useful. So, please, if you'd like to support this channel financially, just go to dcastler.com slash support. Please subscribe. Please uh, like. Please do good work. We need peacekeepers in the world today. And... Uh, so until the next time we meet, God bless you in 73.